This is New Cab News with Lauren Poland. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us. Over half a dozen gunshots rang out this morning in downtown Lloyd Minster behind the Saskatchewan courthouse. New Cap has now learned the suspect didn't have a real firearm, but shot what police believe to be flare and pellet guns. RCMP say the suspect orchestrated the whole incident, hoping police would shoot and kill him. Kelsey Bloxham has the latest. This was the dramatic scene earlier this morning. A 54-year-old man trying to engage officers. First, firing a flare gun from his left hand, holding a pellet gun in the other. You know what, it's, it's absolutely amazing that the police officers that responded there quickly recognized that it was a, a pellet type gun and that it wasn't an actual uh, um, loaded handgun. And as a result of that, very fortunate that this individual was not shot. Shell casings litter the ground beside a small duffel bag. Well, I can tell you that he ended up grabbing some ammunition that was in a bag that he had with him. And when he wasn't shot by police, then he picked up the ammunition and just kind of threw it down the alley at us. And the suspect then flees in a gray rental car. There is a uh, uniform uh, pursuit that was initiated shortly after that and the pursuit ended after about four or five blocks where the suspect was lost and in the end the suspect ended up coming back and tried to get into the Saskatchewan courthouse and was in the front lobby area and was seen by the guard and it was called out by the guard and then we approached and uh, he was arrested at gunpoint without any further incident. For residents sharing the alley with the courthouse, hearing what was thought to be gunfire awoke both inside. Yeah, it was just a shock, like, because I just thought it was firecrackers going off or, you know, somebody trying to start a car. I know it's court day, so maybe it's something to do with court and he wanted to get somebody out or threaten the officers to let him go or something. According to police, the man was scheduled for a court appearance later in the day. This particular individual is facing some serious charges um, as a result of a uh, F Division uh, Saskatchewan ICE investigation, a child pornography investigation, and uh, as a result of that, uh, wanted to commit suicide. The man will now face multiple other charges in addition to the ones he was already facing. Following his arrest, he was taken to hospital for a mental health evaluation. Kelsey Bloxham, New Cap News. The Prairie North Health Region is making changes at the Battlefords Union Hospital to make access easier. Visitors and patients not arriving by ambulance will now be able to enter the BUH through the front doors 24 hours a day. Before the change, those coming to the hospital after 9 at night had to enter through the single ambulance bay. The bay will now be restricted for emergency vehicles only. The changes are being made to provide consistency and eliminate confusion for those coming to the hospital. Well, it's down to the wire for Lloyd Minster property owners. If you've yet to file your property taxes, you have until tomorrow to get your payment in before being penalized. In the next few days, if you want to pay your property taxes, obviously you still can. You can go to your financial institution and make a payment, or you can come into City Hall, or after hours you can also use our kiosk here at City Hall, or also put a check in the kiosk mail slot with your roll number included. The property tax deadline was bumped up from the end of July to the end of June this year, but owners were given a grace period due to the transition. That means you have until the end of July, which is tomorrow, before being slapped with a fine. If you still haven't paid, you'll be charged 1% every month your taxes are late, bumping up to 5% if they still aren't paid by January. Popular hotel franchise The Best Western is gone from the border city, but is being replaced by another hotel chain. The Wayside Inn signed an agreement with Days Inn after its deal with Best Western ran out. According to the general manager, the deal simply made sense for business. We've got uh, four new properties uh, in, the, in the bucket, so to speak, coming uh, within the next two years. And we just felt that uh, a change would position us uh, better in the marketplace. Officials say for guests there will be little change to the services already provided. 
the uh, guest rewards program. Uh, Days is part of Wyndham, uh, so the Wyndham rewards program uh, will be available to both the guests and the associates, and that'll be a, a good thing. But other than that, it'll be, it'll be seamless. McHale denies the change was due to the hotel not meeting Best Western standards. Best Western wouldn't comment on the issue. The change should be official in the next few weeks. New goals and a new direction were the focus of today's Border City Rotary Club meeting. Les Harper was the guest speaker talking about his role and plans for the future as the new Rotary president. While we want to get more involved on, in hands-on projects, one of the things that Rotary has always been very supportive of is uh, supplying money for projects. Um, and over the last few years, I guess, as our club's gotten a little older, we spend less time doing physical projects. And what we'd like to do is get back into the community. Although Harper couldn't disclose one of the bigger projects' plans, he says there are other plans in the works. I would encourage anyone who has anything out there that uh, they think that Rotary could be a part of uh, to get a hold of myself and we'd uh, love to talk about it and uh, work with people. The Rotary Club is mostly intended for professionals and business minded people, but there are also parts of the Rotary available to youth. You can visit the website on your screen for more information. Well, junk food fanatics Here's something you have to try. Lloyd Minster's co-op marketplace has incorporated some unlikely ingredients into one creative cupcake. Elise Cox has more. Meat is making its way onto your baked goods and if the thought of that intrigues you, you have to try the maple bacon cupcake. I'm pleased that our bakery team has been so innovative and so creative with this and has tried to bring the trend to Lloyd Minster's. The trend is combining salty and sweet to create an unlikely dessert. We've had mixed uh, reactions to it. Some people think, oh my god, that's gross, you know, like maple or bacon and uh, cupcake. And other people think, wow, that's a tremendous idea. It even got Peter Quinlan and I curious. And the verdict? And we're not the only ones crazy over this cupcake. I had a young guy comment that it was heavenly. It was his reaction to it. <laughs> it tastes a lot like breakfast. A little bit of sweet, a little bit of salty with the bacon, the maple, just like a pancake. It's very tasty. So what exactly goes into this creative concept? Bacon is put right into the batter and the icing is maple flavored with bacon bits on top. We're always looking for new ideas. We're always trying to come up with new ideas. Next in the works is a savory muffin made with bacon and cheese. Elise Cox, New Cap News. Definitely looks like something I may just have to try. Well, in retrospect, this week from the archives, Brian Hardy takes a look at the sport of inline hockey, and we relive the excitement of Canadian Idol fever. This week in 1994, the new Inline Hockey League was suffering through some growing pains. The Alberta Inline Hockey League has had a few problems in its first season, such as low attendance and also teams not showing up for games. We've been cancelled on in town here three times. It's made us look really bad, made the league look really bad. To try and prevent the same problem next year as has hurt the league this season, a performance bond will be put into place. And Jack Lindquist is hoping that the league's rulings on teams missing games will be taken seriously. Jim Unger, NewsHour Sports. Oh, the time to hesitate, it's true. In late July 2008, the area was gripped with Earl Fever. You're such an intelligent, smart, and charismatic performer. Really good, man. Local singer Earl Stevenson was riding a Canadian Idol high. Me when I kiss the sky. As the mom, you know, you think you think they're do, they're great, and it's just nice to see other people enjoying them too. I guess. Yes, Lloyd's keeping a careful watch on their hometown hero, and not just because he's local. He's got talent too. It's just his charisma. He's just a likable guy, and he's just what you see is what you get. 
Lloyd Minster is now helping the best way they can. It's expected a good couple thousand votes for Earl will come out of this voting party alone. Now, if Earl makes it past the chopping block tonight, he'll be on to Canadian Idol's top seven. And Lloyd's idol frenzy will continue. Go Earl! Give her! <laughs> Sarah Often, Newcap News. Join us next time for more Earl Mania on Retrospect This Week from the Archives. Retrospect This Week from the Archives is brought to you by Webb's Ford. Worth your while to drive the extra mile. Webb's Ford in Vermilion. Coming up, just how important are fresh fruits and vegetables to your diet? We have a local look just after this break. <laughs> 